I'm going to go further into the data to find some some larger numbers to see how much they correspond to the predicted values. Okay, so this is the predicted value here uh, that I just did through the formulas I used. So 0 0.005327. I don't know if you how well you can see that, but that's what this value is. Actually, I should uh, bump up the decimals to five, and that's five decimal places there. So within rounding, so this value here of 0 0.00533, that's the predicted probability for that person of defaulting on their mortgage, and this is the predicted probability when you go through analyze, regression, binary logistic, and then you save the values, group uh, predicted probabilities here. That's what SBS is doing. It's doing the two steps that I just did. I calculated the regression model based on the, um, I calculated the predicted logits based on the regression model, the unstandardized beta weights and the intercepts, and then I converted those predicted probabilities into odds ratios using uh, Euler's number and uh, exponentiating those values in the formula. Uh, so relatively simple, uh, and I think why I find this important is that you can use your multiple regression knowledge to help you understand logistic regression. It's actually fair, it's very closely tied to unstandardized beta weights and intercepts. It's the same thing as yet what you do in multiple regression. Now if we wanted to calculate uh, not just the predicted probabilities but the group membership of our predicted values, we would just have to transform any value that is larger than 0.5 into a 1. Because once it's into a 0.5 value, like this one here, the uh, membership uh, probability is uh, on the side of closer to 1 rather than 0. So any value that's closer to 1 rather than 0 uh, should be a value that's in the uh, defaulting mortgage. So predicted uh, membership. All right, so I'm going to actually transform my predicted probabilities uh, into, actually, I don't want to do it this way. I want to transform, recode into different variable. Predicted probabilities, uh, predicted membership. Okay, change. And the values I want, so I'm going to go for a range. So anything in the 0.000 through to 0.499999 is going to be a zero. I don't expect them to default on their mortgage because they're lower. Of course, I, I could be using a margin of safety by using maybe 0.45 rather than 0.50, but I'm just keeping it to the strict, uh, strict definition of a group membership of 0.5 as a demarcation criterion. So all other values, values I want is one. Okay, and I click OK, and I've got group membership here, and this is based on me calculating them, you know, by hand, not really by hand, but, you know, doing it through the steps. And we can see that um, I'm getting the same predicted values as, um, as what you get. This PGR underscore is what you get when you go into regre uh, regression, binary, and then save. If you click group membership, that's what you're getting here in PGR underscore one, but I just calculated it through the steps in the formulas and then the recode. You get the same values. All right, so it's just these bottom people, 180 to 189. But the problem with the model, as you may remember from watching the first video series, is the model is failing to identify a, a fair number of people. In fact, it was half, I believe. These are the people who, this is based on the real data, this uh, credit default zero ones. This isn't predicted group membership. This is, in fact, group membership. And I'm going to switch that over here so I can have a nice close uh, correspondence. And we can see that the zeros in the, uh, at the lowest end are all corresponding. But then there's a person here that defaulted on their loan, but the model failed to predict them. Okay, so that's one failed prediction. And we've got other instances over here. Another person, they defaulted on their mortgage, but the model failed to pick them up. This is true based on me calculating it through the steps I did. 
or through uh, the group membership that you can do in an automated fashion through the uh, menu driven approach. Here's another one. That's a third person, a fourth person not picked up, a fifth person, a sixth person, seventh person, eight, nine, and there are nine people. You might remember from the regression analysis, from the logistic regression analysis, there were in fact in the classification table nine people that were not identified. But then there's one person that the model is actually identifying as a person that um, would be. Uh, defaulting on the loan, but they in fact didn't when you actually look at the data. So uh, the model is not perfect by any means, but it, it was an improvement statistically from just using uh, an, an idea that well everyone doesn't um, does everyone doesn't um, default on their mortgage. So using the model gender and salary certainly helps uh, predicting, but it still also fails to identify a certain number of people that do default on a mortgage. So if we could have another variable in the predictive model, maybe we'd be able to tighten that up a bit. Um, anyway, I'm going to conclude this uh, video series about here. Uh, I find this, you know, I find this very interesting to do this kind of thing in SPSS uh, to understand really the nuts and bolts of what's going on in, in logistic regression or any model building exercise uh, with, within the context of regression. Um, and um, I hope you did too. Thanks for listening.